Hello viewers, welcome to my channel. I'm Hashem Ali Khan. So this is the last and final video on T-test. Two problems are left out. All the problems, 18 problems I have given in the material. Out of 18, 16 problems have completed. The two problems are left that is 14th and 17th. These two problems I am going to complete in this video. Remaining all problems I have completed in the previous videos. So if you want the complete grasp of the subject, follow my instructions. Watch all the videos from beginning. If you join in between, you may not be able to understand. So go to the playlist, select the subject statistics for management. Select the videos for t-test problems and solutions. Watch the first, second, third video. Definitely. And particularly in this t-test, we have varied type of problems. All the problems are not same. So we have to see the problem and decide which formula will be applied, what it is asking. So in one attempt only, you may not be able to understand. So if you want the, uh, to have a perfect knowledge after watching the video, do it yourself. Practice the problems. Then only you can become perfect. So before starting the, prob the problems, I expect my viewers to have a printout of the problems which I have given in the link under my description. So always keep ready the problems before watching the video. Take a screenshot of these two problems, then I'll explain all the points. Come on, see the 14th problem. Memory capacity of 9 students was tested before and after training. So some training is given and we want to see what is the effect of this training. State whether the training is effective or not. Students 1, 2, 3, 4 up to 9. So 9 students we have selected and before and after marks are given. That means memory, memory capacity one test was conducted for testing the memory one test was conducted so before uh, training and after training marks are given for example first student before giving the training the student marks were 10 and after uh, giving the training the marks have become 12 for the same student similarly for second student before giving the training 15 after giving the training 17 so we are given paired values for the sample. Totally nine samples are there. For every sample, two values are given before and after. That means we have to apply paired t-test. So it will not be specified in the problem. By seeing the problem, we decide that it's a paired t-test because sample values are not independent, but uh, dependent. <coughs> paired one. So first of all, now hypothesis mu1 is equal to mu2 no significant difference in scores before training and after training that means the training is ineffective the scores remain same because null the meaning of null is no difference at all the score before and after the score remains same the training is not effective alternative hypothesis yes training is effective that means the score after training is more than the score before training. In other words, the score before training is less. And after training, the score is more. So we can write mu1 is less than mu2. Mu1 is the score before training. And mu2 is the score after training. So before training, it is less. Left tail test. Training is effective. The score after training is more. That is the null and alternative hypothesis. Now level of significance alpha 0 0.05. It is not given in the problem. We assumed degree of freedom V is equal to N minus 1. So how many samples are given? 9 samples are given. 9 minus 1 is 8. Now we have to apply the formula for T test statistic. For applying the formula, we need summation D and summation D square. These two values we require. So we make the table. First column student. Second, score. Score before and after training. The score before training is denoted as x1 and the score after training is denoted as x2. 
this x1 values and x2 values are given in the problem the score before training and the score after training now d difference x1 minus x2 so 10 minus 12 it is minus 2 15 minus 17 minus 2 9 minus 8 1 3 minus 5 minus 2 like this differences we have taken the total of difference is minus 7 this is the total of d summation d now square it 2 2s are 4 2 2s are 4 1 1s are 1 2 2s are 4 square all these differences summation d is 29 we have completed we want summation d and summation d square that's what we require for our formula now t the formula for t for paired t test is this one already in the previous video two three problems i have solved on this paired t test so t is equal to d bar divided by s square by n under root s square by n under root so we require two things first we require d bar and then s square d bar is equal to summation d by n how much is summation d minus 7 how much is n 9 so minus 7 divided by 9 is minus 0 0.78 this is the d bar now s square s square is equal to 1 divided by n minus 1 bracket start summation d square minus summation d whole square by n this is the formula for s square already in the previous videos also we have applied this formula this formula will be applied only for paired t test how to find out paired t test whenever before and after words are given when the data is given before and after now 1 minus 1 divided by n minus 1 n is 9 so 1 divided by 9 minus 1 is 8 summation d square is 29 summation d is minus 7 so minus 7 whole square divided by 9 so you will get 2.945 s square value now substitute t is equal to d bar d bar is minus 0 0.78 divided by s square 2.945 divided by n n is 9 under root so if you divide this you will get 0 0.3272 under root so after root 0.7572 so final answer t is equal to minus 1.36 this is the computed value of t now table value the table value of t at 5% level for v is equal to 8. Here you can see v is equal to 8. Degree of freedom. For left tail test, left tail test, one tail. Left tail test is minus 1.86. Now if you refer the table for v is equal to 8. See here, this is the t table. I have already provided this t table in the description PDF you can find. So take a printout of the PDF of t table and keep it ready. So here 8, V is equal to 8, so 8 degree of freedom, under 0 0.05, you will get 2.31. But 2.31 is 2 tail, 2 tail it is 2.31, one column before you have to refer for one tail test. So one column before 1.86, you can find 1.86 is the value one column before, because it is one tail. So minus 1.86 because it is less than that's why we should take minus 1.86 now we have to compare this computed value will fall in acceptance or rejection region the computed value of t minus 1.36 is greater than the table value minus 1.86 so if you are not sure i'll show it in a diagrammatic form see this is the normal curve and it's a left tail test. Left tail means uh, rejection region will lie only on the left side. The computer, the table value is minus 1.86. Here minus 1.86. So any value below this one point, minus 1.86 will fall in rejection region. This is the rejection region. And this completely is the acceptance region. Now we have to find out whether computed value will fall in acceptance or rejection region. This minus 1.36 is greater than minus 1.86. So here it will come to minus 
three six. So if you move like this, minus one point eight six, minus one point eight seven, minus one point eight eight, like this, values will go in rejection region, right? So one point three six minus one point three six is greater than minus one point eight six. It falls in acceptance region. When it falls in acceptance region, null hypothesis is accepted. What you have written in null hypothesis? No significant difference in student score before and after training. This we will accept. Ultimate decision: the training is ineffective because the score before and after are same. No difference at all. That is the conclusion. The computed value of t minus one point three six is greater than the table value, so it falls in acceptance region. Null hypothesis. H O means null hypothesis is accepted. No significant difference in score before and after training. Training is not effective. That's all. So this is the end of problem number fourteen. Now last and final problem on t test is seventeenth problem. an intensive coaching was given to 11 students and they were examined twice in a month the results of these two tests are given state whether the coaching is effective or not just like previous problem training was there here the word coaching a special coaching is given intensive coaching is given to the student in order to find out whether coaching is effective or not we have conducted a test on 11 students so test was conducted before coaching and test was conducted after coaching so it is a paired t test so here serial number 1 2 3 4 up to 11 11 students are there so first student before giving the intensive coaching his marks was 19 after giving the coaching again test was conducted his score was 17 and for second student before coaching it is 16 after coaching 20 for third student before coaching 23 after coaching 23 no change like that we have recorded the marks below coaching and after coaching now again we want to find out null hypothesis no difference at all the marks are same before giving the coaching and after it that means the coaching is not at all effective that is null alternative hypothesis mu1 is less than mu2 that means the marks before coaching is less and the marks after coaching is more to so left tail test the coaching is effective right in that way we have to explain now now hypothesis mu1 is equal to mu2 no significant difference in student score before and after intensive coaching alternative hypothesis h1 mu1 less than mu2 exactly similar to what we have done in 14th problem coaching is effective the marks after coaching is more now uh, level of significance alpha 0.05 assumed degree of freedom n minus 1 11 number of students are 11 so 11 minus 1 10 test statistics same columns first column serial number 1 to 11 then marks marks before coaching x1 and marks after coaching x2 we have denoted then d is equal to x1 minus x2 and d square as usual now 19 minus 17 2 16 minus 20 minus 4 23 minus 23 0 like the differences you have taken now take the total summation d minus 14 now square it 2 2 is a 4 4 4 is a 16 0 3 3 is a 9 2 2 is a 4 the square summation d square it once we get summation d and summation d square we can apply the formula for t t is equal to d bar divided by s square by n under root so two items we require d bar and s square d bar is equal to summation d by n minus 14 divided by 11 n is 11 so minus 14 by 11 minus 1.273 that is d bar now s square 1 by n minus 1 bracket start summation d square minus summation d whole square by n this is the formula n is 11 11 minus 1 is 10 so 1 divided by 10 summation d square 
समेशन डी इज माइनस फोर्टीन होल स्क्वायर बाय इलेवन एन इज इलेवन सो यूर एटी टू माइनस फोर्टीन स्क्वायर डिवाइड बाय इलेवन यूल गेट सेवेंटीन पॉइंट एट टू नो एटी टू माइनस सेवेंटीन पॉइंट एट टू डिवाइड बाय टेन यूल गेट सिक्स पॉइंट फोर वन एट दिस इज एस स्क्वायर नो सब्सटीट्यूट टी इज इक्वल टू डी बार हाउ मच इज डी बार माइनस वन पॉइंट टू सेवन थ्री डिवाइड बाय सिक्स पॉइंट फोर वन एट डिवाइड बाय इलेवन अंडर रूट सो आफ्टर डिवाइडिंग पॉइंट फाइव एट थ्री थ्री रूट आफ्टर रूट पॉइंट सेवन सिक्स फोर तो फाइनली कंप्यूटेड वैल्यू ऑफ टी इज माइनस वन पॉइंट सिक्स सेवन दिस इज द कंप्यूटेड वैल्यू ऑफ टी नाउ वी फाइंड आउट द टेबल वैल्यू क्रिटिकल वैल्यू क्रिटिकल रीजन द टेबल वैल्यू ऑफ टी एट फाइव परसेंट लेवल फॉर वी इज इक्वल टू टेन डिग्री ऑफ फ्रीडम टेन and for left tail test is minus 1.81 again we refer the table in this table row 10 degree of freedom is 10 so 10 ke row mein under 0.05 it is 2.23 but 2.23 is the two tail test value we need one tail so before that 2.23 1.81 so minus 1.81 is the critical digit तो एनी वैल्यू बिफोर माइनस वन पॉइंट एट वन बिलो वन पॉइंट एट वन इज रिजेक्टेड एनी वैल्यू विच इज मोर देन माइनस वन पॉइंट एट वन इज एक्सेप्टेड नाउ अवर कंप्यूटेड वैल्यू इज हाउ मच माइनस वन पॉइंट सिक्स सेवन नाउ कंपेयर माइनस वन पॉइंट सिक्स सेवन माइनस वन पॉइंट एट वन तो माइनस वन पॉइंट सिक्स सेवन इज ग्रेटर देन माइनस वन पॉइंट एट वन so it falls in acceptance region same diagram i am putting here so here minus 1.81 this is minus 1.81 our computed value minus 1.67 so minus 1.67 will lie here minus 1.67 will lie here where it is falling in acceptance region computed value is greater than the critical value it falls in acceptance region the null hypothesis is accepted what we have written in null hypothesis no significant difference in marks before and after coaching that means coaching is not at all effective the performance of the students is remaining same so here the computed value of t minus 1.67 is greater than the critical value minus 1.0 so it falls in acceptance null hypothesis accepted there is no significant difference in marks before and after coaching the coaching is ineffective that's it this is the end of all the problems all 18 problems i have solved on t test so if you want the perfect knowledge watch all the videos not once twice thrice then only you can be able to get the good command so in sampling i have completed z test large sample test and t test small sample test next to topic i'll show i'll start inshallah anova analysis of variance in the next video so if you are satisfied with my lecture give a like to the video share my channel in your group in your friend circle so that more students can watch the video get a command of the subject be confident on the subject give your comments where are you from from which university you are i mean doing your course and uh, subscribe my channel if you have not yet subscribed i have started one more channel second channel by name hans accounting institute visit that channel also the uh, link is given in the description in this video also visit that channel some informative some knowledgeable videos are uploaded that will help you to gain knowledge on accounting on management and particularly the second channel is more uh, i mean particularly meant for igcsc student those who are pursuing cambridge and edexcel pearson courses that will be very much helpful to them but anybody if you want to increase the knowledge you can visit that channel and subscribe to my second channel also inshallah we'll continue the new topic called anova analysis of variance in the next video